Hey everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to a new adventure in our gaming channel. Now I wanted to move away from computerized Let's Plays and dig into something a little bit more tactile. Wargaming Let's Plays, done on a tabletop. Used to do a lot of wargaming about 20 years ago before I get married and had kids and had pets that would jump up on tables and wipe out an entire eastern front with the swipe of a tail. But now our pets are fat and old. And our kids, well, they're not fat and old, but they're heading off, heading off to college pretty soon. So have a little bit more time to dig into something like this. So let's jump in with that and get started. Our first adventure, our first Let's Play, is going to be a classic from Avalon Hill, Africa Corps. And this game was published in 1964 in the nascent era of wargaming. We're going to dig in in this first episode and take an overview, overview of the game at the components. Then we're going to take a look at some of the rules and the mechanics, and that'll bring us pretty much to the end of this first episode. In episode one, we'll dig in and start our Let's Play. The big question is, can the Axis rewrite history and come up with the victory in North Africa, or will the Allies recreate history and end up with the win? Along the way, I hope you'll be able to provide some advice and tips and strategies as what we might do. We're going to play both sides, the Axis and the Allies, and talk about different strategies and try them out in the game. But it hopefully will create an interesting story, and I hope you can be part of it, and hope you'll stick around for the journey. With that in mind, let's get started. So let's open up the box and see what's inside. It's not that tremendously of a complicated game. We have, uh, of course, the counters here, traditional counters. We'll take a closer look at them. I did go through and clip all the corners and make sure they were all here. And so we are all set from that regard. Get a die roll to resolve combat, a pencil, because one of the turn markers is there. Must have been left over when I was playing before. And by far my favorite element of the game, which is magnificent, is this four panel map. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the battlefield as we go forward, but beautifully colored, we have the different types of terrain. Germans start here on the west side. Then we have the two fortresses, Bengasi and Tobruk, and then Fading over to the east, we get the uh, Allied Forces uh, kind of base is on this eastern side of the map. So it's a long, sprawling west to east map, which is just a lot of fun to play on. So looking forward to that part, we have our order of battle. This gives you the positions of the units at the start, uh, start of the game. And then we have our order of battle. And again, I did check to make sure that everything is here. We have the battle manual which gives a kind of a history of the battle, as well as some examples. And again, this is the first edition rule set. We'll talk about that momentarily. Then we have a, a very uh, old school time record card where you're supposed to track things with the pencil. And I can see I must have played before uh, and never really got past January 1942. I'm not really sure why, but we have a new solution for this. So we'll go to that and that's just one-sided. Then our combat results table where it does show you it calculates all the odds out, so you can go all the way up to 60 to 40 if you can't figure it out on your own, and then the results up top here. And then lastly, our first edition rule book, which is only uh, four pages here, uh, blue and red, two color printed, uh, pretty nice set. It's got all the information you need to know how to play. And we're gonna make three changes to the game. The first is that I went to Board Game Geek and I found the third edition rule set and printed those out. So they helped clarify, clarify a couple of places that were unclear in the original, original rule set. And then instead of using this uh, old school Africa Corps time record card, I found one on Board Game Geek that's just marvelous. We can just put a counter on it and track it this way. And uh, so I printed this out and laminated it, that, so that's all set. And then I'm gonna try one mod with the game. I went through and picked up, I decided to make some event cards. So these are gonna be just a set of cards we use at the beginning of the turn. I made a deck of 24 and I posted these on Board Game Geek and then uh, printed them out here on 65 uh, pound Paper. So it's going to be just an event that flips over that just modifies the supply and some various things for every turn as it goes through just to create some kind of variability and uh, what's going on. And some are just all is calm and there's no effect and the impacts a lot supply and different things like that. So there's everything inside the box. Now let's take a look at some of the core mechanics and the key aspects of playing the game. We're not going to go into a full dive into the rule set, but just enough so that if you're watching, you kind of get a sense for what the mechanics are and how the game flows as we play through things. 
So let's take a look at the scope and scale of the game. Behind me, you can see superimposed is the map of the game. It starts in April of 1941 and it ends of October of 1942. Each turn is two weeks, is a half a month of real time. So the entire game lasts 38 turns, unless victory's been achieved before that. And we'll talk about that momentarily. There are no naval units in the game, and there's no air units in the game. It's all ground forces. And each hex on this map, which spans, as we can take a look here if I scroll across from west to east, each hex is about six to nine miles in scale. So that gives you kind of a rough idea of the scope of the game here. Now, there's three winning conditions in the game. The first winning condition is if either side completely wipes out the other side, they win the game. So if there's no allied units left on the board, it's game over. Um, likewise, if there's no Axis forces, if the allies wipe out the Axis, they win. However, the second way to win is to control all four of the kind of the key victory points in the game for two consecutive turns. And those, very simply, if we kind of take a look at these, the first one of those is this British base, which is access to Alexandria on the very east edge of the map. This is kind of one of the places where um, allied reinforcements will come in. And the allies, again, at the start of the game, control the whole map. So this is one of those four victory points. Now, at the other end, if I scroll back here now across, and we can take a look at the other three victory points in the game. Just as at the far end of the map, at the far east end of the map, you have the British uh, victory point going. At the west end, you have the the Axis access point. This is kind of their home base, if you would. And then in between that, the other two contested victory points are the fortress here of Benghazi and the fortress of Tobruk. If you control all four of these points, so the three we can see on the map and the allied victory point, the allied home base, if you would, for two consecutive turns, you win. Now, the very important third victory condition is this one. If the, these two victory conditions aren't met by the end of the game, the Allies win, which makes the Axis forces very much the aggressor. They have to either wipe out the Allied forces or control all four victory points in order to win the game. If they don't do that, by default, the Allies win. So uh, that's the rough scope and scale of the game. Let's jump in and take a look at some of the units and the terrain in the map and some of the details. Let's take a look at the terrain in the game. There are a number of important types. The first to point out is the clear terrain, which is basically this golden yellow terrain or anything that has a city or a town in it. And movement and defense are normal in these squares. So they don't impede movement and they don't impede combat. However, escarpment is this rougher terrain, this dark brown terrain with the squiggles on it. And this does impede both movement and combat. Uh, combat defense factors are doubled inside escarpment. And then if you move into escarpment, unless you're accessing it by a road or entering onto a roadway, you have to stop once you enter that and can't leave until the next turn. There are fortresses in the game, two of them. We can see this is the startup position for the allied forces. They have some units in Tobruk. And uh, defense is also doubled inside these fortresses. And uh, Tobruk also plays a port role in the game. So this is a, a key hex to control because you can bring supply and fresh units and reinforcements into Tobruk in the game. So the side that controls Tobruk controls the center of the board. So that's rather of a significant strategic value. But yes, fortresses are double the defense value. We have roadways. This Well, one road, where it's the, really the coast road that runs along the entire map, the northern edge of the map is this red line. And how the, the road movement works in the game is basically if a unit is in one of these hexes, it can add 10 movement squares onto its movement for that turn. So this infantry unit could move six uh, in regular terrain and then an additional 10 squares if it's on a road. So the roadway adds a lot of speed to the game in terms of moving west to east or east to west quickly. Lastly, we're looking at the east side of the map here, south of the the access to Alexandria. And here we have the Qatar Depression, and this is impassable to units. So this serves as kind of a funnel for the forces heading up to the northeast here to Alexandria. So no units may enter into the Qatar Depression. And there are no air units in the game, so uh, there's basically nothing that can go in there. Let's take a look at the units in the game. Basically, it's relatively straightforward. Each combat unit has three factors attached to it, uh, left number, central number, and the right number. The left number is the attack value, so this British infantry that we're looking at here has an attack value of two. The middle number is its defense, so it also has a defense of two. And then the right number is its base movement, which is six. Now, one of the things that you'll notice in the game if you look at it is that the British have a lot, the Allies have a lot more units. However, the German forces, uh, they have lesser units, 
but their combat factors are more are quite a bit stronger. For example, this is one of those two strongest units in the game. This is German Panzer units, seven attack, seven defense, 10 movement. And so the Germans have a, a smaller but more compact force, while the Allies have a lot more troops and, and have a lot more mobility in terms of being able to spread them around. But each individual unit isn't that strong. And the stacking rules for the game, you can put three combat units in one hex, and that is, there are some other units that we'll look at shortly, but uh, three combat units can go to a hex in terms of general stacking. Let's just take a, a quick look at how combat works in the game. Basically, one of the unique features of the game is that there are supply units in the game. And this is uh, one of the, the mechanics that plays a big role in how the game plays out, and that you can only attack if you can trace a line, an unimpeded line of supply back to one of these supply units within five squares. So right now, these two German units could attack because they are in supply provided by this uh, supply unit. And each side gets uh, at most one supply unit per turn. So you have to be pretty strategic in terms of how you burn up your attacks. Now, it, because the attacks basically consume the supply unit. And you can use the supply unit as many times in one turn as you want to, but at the end of that turn, it is consumed. And for the Axis forces, they have a chance that their supply units get sunk each turn. So in the beginning of the game, every turn they have to roll a die, and if they get a one or a two, their supply unit does not arrive. It gets worse as the game goes on in the back half of the game, it gets quite a bit better. So the Axis in particular have to be pretty careful about how often and in which way they burn up those supply units. Supply units can also be captured. We'll talk about that if the case arises, but we're not going to go into too many details right now. But just to kind of give a sample uh, of how this would all work out, we have two German units attacking this uh, British 22nd Guards unit. The attack factors are 7 plus 3 would be 10, and you have to attack everything you're next to. Um, and so, and if you're next to something, you have to attack. So basically these units would have to attack if they move next to this British unit. It would be 10 to two, which would be five to one. And then you roll a six sided die and whatever results you get on the combat table, that gives you the result of the combat. And five to one would be pretty strong odds. And then at the end of that turn, this supply unit would be consumed and it would be removed from the game. While there aren't many units on the board at the start of the game, one of the things to be over is that reinforcements play a significant role in the game. Here we're taking a look at the vast horde of allied reinforcements that come in. And again, as you can see, a lot of them are weaker 1-1-6 one, one, units with just weak defense and attack units, but there are a lot of them. So using our numbers, using the allies' numbers to their advantage is going to be a key factor in, in getting them to victory. Here we can see the German reinforcements to the game. Again, much smaller in number, but much more powerful on the whole than the Allied reinforcements. So the Germans have fewer units, but they are much stronger. One of the unique features of the game is the role of Erwin Rommel. He is the only leader modeled in the game, but basically what he does is he confers a movement bonus to any units that spend part of their turn with him. So if a unit moves with Rommel for two, they, can, he get, they basically get a two square bonus for their turn. So this uh, Italian infantry, which by itself is fairly slow, moving the desert here, could normally move four squares, but they could say, for example, go one, two, and now they're paired up with Rommel. Rommel can move three, four with them, those two squares that they spent with Rommel would be their free part of the move. They could continue on and go five, six, moving two additional squares per turn. So Rommel can pair up in any way that he can with a number of units to confer that bonus to movement onto those units. As we take a look at the German starting position, which basically has Rommel, some of his panzers, and some Italian infantry starting near the town of Aguila, We'll talk a little bit about the sequence of play. And the sequence of play in the game is fairly straightforward. We've modded the game a little bit to add an event card that we're going to pull at the beginning of each turn. And we're going to do what that event card says. Then after that, the sequence is fairly straightforward. The Germans roll for supply, bring in any reinforcements, and move the units. Then they do all their attacks, followed by a like sequence for the Allied forces. The Allied forces are going to check for bring in new supply, bring in any reinforcements, move all their units, and then attack. Turns go back and forth basically over the course of the game. And again, the game lasts for about a year and a half, 38 turns from early April 1941 until the end of October in 1942. When we come back in episode one, we'll move these as starting at, um, German and, and Italian forces, and we'll get the battle started. So that brings us to the end of our introductory episode. If you've liked it, please 
please uh, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, please consider subscribing. We'll be back in episode one for the first few turns of the game. See you then.